I'd now like to introduce Patrice McCarthy, um, who is the General Counsel and Deputy Director of CAVE, Connecticut Association of Boards of Education. We have a chef here right here. Thank Patrice. you very Thank much. You um, the board directed me to ask, ask um, CAVE if, if, if someone could come and, and speak on, on regarding board minutes and answer other questions of the board regarding uh, the work that we do. And CAVE has always been a partner of ours to help us uh, through sometimes the, um, the difficult um, corners we have to turn in once in a while. And, and I, you know, we couldn't have gotten a better person than Patrice to come and speak to us on these topics. Thanks, Patrice. Well, thank you very much, and it's a pleasure to be here, and a pleasure to be here on a night where you're honoring our students and, and members of your staff. I'm going to pass out a couple of things that are for you as resources after I leave, um, but also know that we are really just a phone call away. So if you have questions that come up after we've had our discussion tonight, please feel free to, to be in touch with me, either through the superintendent or board chair or or even face the lace. I put Okay, and then I'm going to save that for a minute. So the things I've been asked specifically to talk about have to mainly relate to how you conduct your business. So I want to give a little perspective, because I understand a couple of you are newer members of the board, um, and it's always a good opportunity to review really what the legal requirements are for a board. Sure, if I need to talk just one sure. more. Um, I'm just going to say, being, I'm not sure if we can audience That's good. Okay. That's good. Okay. That'd be great. Sure. That's it's good. good. We got the thumbs up. Perfect. Um, so let me talk a little bit about the legal parameters in which you want. Um, you all know that you, as a as a board of education, you only have authority when you come together as a body. And that's true of the board of selectmen, town councils, representative town meetings, a whole host of other uh, local governing bodies. So that means that your board meetings are really very important opportunities, because those are the only opportunity that you have as a group to discuss and deliberate issues that come before you because it would be a violation of the Freedom of Information Act if a quorum of you had those discussions somewhere else other than, other than at the board table. Now the law is, is very specific in terms of things like you have to post your meetings, you have to have them accessible to the public, you have to allow for them to be recorded. Um, it also is very specific in terms of minutes must be taken and must be posted within seven days after regular meetings, even if the board has not met during that period to, to review the minutes. And generally, that's not the case. Uh, hopefully, most of the time, you're not meeting every week. Uh, <laughs> we all hope that, right? Um, there is no legal requirement in terms of the detail of Board of Education minutes. They, they do have to contain a record of who attended and votes that were taken. That's the, that's the extent of the legal requirement. Our advice to boards is don't turn your minutes into a transcript. They become much less useful to you. They become much more difficult to get approval on because if you think about any discussion that you may have had where at the beginning of the discussion, you made a comment, and after listening to your colleagues for five or 10 minutes, you made a comment that may be completely different than your original, that your, your perspective may have changed, your opinion may have changed, and that's what should be happening around the board table, that you deliberate and discuss, <coughs> and perhaps influence each other's thinkings. Well, if you've got minutes that are cast in stone that Susie said this, and then, you know, Ten minutes later, the minutes show that Susie said something completely different. It becomes not very useful and also not very reflective of, of the actual discussion that took place. Um, so what we advise is that the minutes show who attended, motions that were made, votes that were taken, 
and a summary of the issues that were discussed. In other words, for each agenda item, maybe two or three sentences. Not, <coughs> not a transcript, but so that you get a sense of what the discussion was about. We think that that's the most useful, and that's the practice that most boards follow. We have some boards that say, well, we want to use the minutes as a vehicle to inform our public. And I say, well, if you really think that those 14 pages of minutes from each of your board meetings are helping to inform your public, probably not. It may, then maybe you want to do a one-page summary in a district newsletter or something after each board meeting. That's a great communication tool to really inform the public. The other issue that often comes up in terms of the conduct of board meetings is the issue of public participation. And there are different customs and different practices um, around the state. But it's important to remember, and for you to help your public know, that your meetings are meetings held in public, because that's a requirement of the Freedom of Information Law. But they are not public meetings, they are not public forums, they are not public hearings, unless you specifically schedule a public hearing. And some boards do that around, if there's a hot topic, school redistricting comes to, to mind, um, where they say, we need to set aside one night where we're just going to listen to the public. And we're going to be here from 7 until 10, and that's we're not doing any board business, but we're going to be listening. There is no legal requirement in Connecticut that any public body provide for any public comment or public participation during their meetings but virtually every board of education does. And, but they do so with certain parameters around that. Most boards limit speakers to three minutes. Um, most also don't engage in a conversation with the individual. In other words, they allow individuals to come forward, make their comments, but indicate that Either the administration will follow up if, if it's a matter that needs um, review by the administration, the administration will follow up and get back to the individual, or just say thank you very much for your for your opinion about all day. We appreciate it. Um, it's very difficult for you as a board or for your administration to try and respond to the whole host of issues that might be raised during public participation, because you don't know that, in many cases, you don't know that they're coming forward. Um, you certainly, as a board, haven't had time to discuss the issue. So it, it just, it, you get the input from the public, and then you give them the assurance that if it's a matter that needs further attention, it will um, proceed through the administration, and it may be an issue that ultimately has to come back to the board for discussion. It's important to help the public understand what this process is. And so I, I brought with me of what we use as a model public comment disclaimer. Some boards put this on the table at the entrance to their board room. Sometimes the board chair actually reads this at the beginning of the meeting. And, and that can sometimes be helpful if you're sort of changing from what had become a customary practice to say, this is how our board <coughs> operates. This is what public participation or public comment is going to look like in our community. Um, you can also make exceptions. If you know that there are, um, if there's a significant issue and you have people that, that, that you believe are going to need more than three minutes, you can for a given board meeting say, we're going to suspend our three minute limit and we're going to give everybody five minutes. What you have to do, though, is make sure that you're fair to everybody. In other words, don't give 20 minutes to the person that's, that's telling you things that you really want to hear, and two minutes to the person that doesn't necessarily share your opinions. Just it, do it even-handedly. Um, and that can be hard to do, but that really is up to the chairman to sort of keep time. Um, sorry. <laughs> Uh, and it's, we see this at the State Board of Education, the chair of the State Board. If you watch their meetings, many of them are televised on um, the CTN. And they will, the chair will say, you know, 
you've gone beyond your three minutes already, could you wrap up your comments? So you can do it in a nice way. You can help people get used to the fact that, and you can say an awful lot in three minutes. As somebody that has to testify before the state legislature, where the limit is always three minutes, and they will cut you off, um, you know, you choose your words carefully if you know you have three minutes. So that's an overview of, of the issues that I understood you had questions about. Uh, what other questions do you have or, or responses about the things that I've shared? <laughs> you seem to have hit on a number of topics that have, I'm on the board, this is my 10th year, and you <coughs> touched on a number of items that have occurred during those, those years. That is the idea of do we or don't we have public participation? The length of the particular individual's participation, uh, widely, I won't say cut them off or you know, wrapping it up. Uh, your your item here uh, was read at one year. It was read uh, not religiously, but uh, pretty faithfully uh, at the beginning of the uh, uh, public participation privilege of the floor. And, uh, it, it's sort of refreshing to review some of those things, to hear it, that, yeah, we did that, we did that. And to uh, generate thought on my part, how can we improve it? Mm -hmm. Thank you. And, and these are issues that all boards of education deal with. We, when we do our new board member orientation, these are things we talk about, but there are also things that boards need to revisit over time, as, as you've indicated. We even did the, uh, the timer. I was the time. Oh, lucky you. <laughs> yes. 